talk about the gear that you guys use. You uh, got a nice Fender acoustic that you use. That's oh. your, your main guitar. Uh, I use a, um, a Martin as okay. my main guitar and um, as my backup and a Fender acoustic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I guess uh, I like the sound sound of both for for different reasons. I mean, for the more darker songs. Uh, for our last um, single, which was Heavy Hearted Girl, that was actually done on the, on the Fender. Mm. Um, and then for our brighter songs, more like really full and um, yeah, full and thieves, yeah. um, a bit more like bright. I'll use the um, yeah, use the Martin. Yeah. yeah. Has it been a struggle to get a good acoustic sound um, over the years? Yeah, I think so. Definitely. I mean, one struggle, uh, especially in the live setting, is. Um, when you're playing acoustic and somebody or the sound guy will put it in a fallback, mm. you get um you get feedback. So yep. the sound hole will pick up the sound again and it'll just keep happening. And so for example you're playing a, a soft song like, like full, mm. where it relies on finger picking, the strings will start vibrating to the point where you actually can't play. Yeah. So um and it can sound atrocious. Yeah. yeah. So I mean <laughs> with the help of our sound guy Morgan McWaters, um you know, he, he really helps us do that. And yeah. that. You'll notice as well that I'm using the um, Fender a Twin to use as my own fallback, which is behind me, so okay. that's stopping yeah. the feedback happening. So yeah. yeah. And as a bit of a monitor for you? Or exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's, that's kind of what I've tried to do to, yeah. to help me out. Yeah. Yeah. And what have you got on stage? Um, I'm actually, I'm running a Twin as well, and uh, just a, an American Fender Strat. Yep. Um, and I'm also running through John's uh, G system, which is an absolute spaceship. It's, yeah. um, <laughs> it's enormous. So it's TC. TC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So, but that this, the sounds that we've gotten out of that are pretty, pretty unreal, and yeah. it's super handy for um, sort of. There's a few tunes in particular, one called Red Oxide that we're yet to release, um, but we play live, and it's got sort of, you know, four four settings like through like this kind of intro versus chorus, um, like a middle eight and a, like an outro bit, then they've all sort of got different sounds and um, like an octaver on one at one point and um, yeah, just something a bit more crunchy at the end and yeah, it's, it's quite it's handy for somebody like Gabe who's, you know, playing, <laughs> playing keys, guitar mm. and doing backups as well, so like, you know, with one punch of a of one button, he can get all sounds happening yep. as yeah. opposed to tweaking yeah, trying to tweak yeah. and, and get everything happening with you know five ten pedals you can just do it with one yeah. So, yeah. and what is your keyboard setup uh the keyboard is a mismatch of um <laughs> we just seem to be accruing them we go up we, we when we went to see wayne and record with him he um just pulled out this dusty old like what looked like a child's keyboard oh. and we looked at it and it's a cassia tone what was it 40 no what, I can't 48, remember. I think. 48, yeah. yeah. MT48, yeah. MT48, so he got that out, and that was one of the things that I think really um, connected all the songs and made made a really nice kind of, almost like a motif, like in the background, and just yeah. <clears throat> like linking everything together. So we got home, and John bought one of those, so we got one of those on stage. We've got the Nord, um, what the stage Electro. The Electro, yeah. yeah. Um, and we've also got a Yamaha PS 35. 35, yeah. yeah. So between those three, yeah, we've got some, some really cool sounds and um, I think one day it'd be nice to get the keyboard that binds them all. Yeah. yeah. Or, but, I, but then again, we are um, mm. playing to it at once at some point. So. We actually run the um, Casio <coughs> Tone through a Blues Junior as well. Okay. So, I mean, it gets this kind of... Maybe tube quality, I guess. Yeah. One. It's one quite eerie. Say. Yeah. I think. Yeah. As opposed to just running it di and yeah. straight into the desk, I don't think it sounds amazing. Mm. Yeah, through the desk, but through an amp, sounds great. Yeah. yeah. Um, you guys have played uh, a few shows now. Uh, yeah. Do you think much about stagecraft? And I mean, is there someone you you admire and watch and and learn from, or is it something you just pick up from from playing? I think we're quite aware of it. I mean, we've we've actually started. Uh, practicing at, at, at venues now as mm. opposed to going to uh, rehearsal rooms mm. purely because um, you know we can film ourselves and then go back and, and look at you know at everyone as a whole because like, I, f I find that it's hard to you know 
once you're in it, you know, you might be focusing on your vocals or, you know, your guitar yeah. riff or your, your keys part. So <coughs> you need an, an, an objective objective view. And, it, you know, that's not your friend, that we can all sit down as a band and just go, yeah, maybe don't do that. Or, yeah. yeah, definitely do that. Um, and I think that's kind of working well. So uh, to kind of answer your question, we haven't found what actually works, though. So yeah. We're still yet to find our feet with that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, what about the, uh, the musical vision of the band? Is that something you think about where you're heading, or is it a matter of just working with the songs at that time? Um, yeah, for sure. I think we um, it's gotten to the point where we've written enough songs together to to know sort of where the band's heading without it being explicitly stated. I think, mm. and and there are certain like um, yeah. our, our other guitarist, Shawnee, he plays in another band, and it's almost like sometimes he he writes so many licks, and like um, it just <laughs> it just seems like they come. You know, he's got he's got you know fifty a day kind of thing. Um, and he sort of give it like sometimes you'll hear him say something like oh that's Forest Falls leak or that's like a different band leak or that's this or that's that and yeah. he just kind of categorises them and I think we all do that to some extent like you, yeah. you write you write parts and, and ideas and sometimes you think it's applicable and sometimes you don't and I'm not sure exactly what criteria yeah. we're working with but it yeah. seems like we're all pretty in sync and uh, you, you've done two EPs so is, <coughs> is the next step another EP or a full length album? I think uh I think we'll do another EP. <laughs> hopefully before we use that. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we've, we've been actually um, working on some new materials as well and doing some pre-production for that as well. So um, hopefully we do reach that goal of getting it out before the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. And for the rest of the year, apart from recording, more gigs? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Um, love to do another tour for yeah. before the end of the year too. Yeah. yeah. And, and the grand plan? Grand plan. Oh. <laughs> Look, I, I think um, connection is the grand plan. Like, um, yeah, uh, no matter how big or small, like just connecting with people. Mm. Yeah. I think that's that's the grand plan. Yeah. But, um, for me, anyway. Yeah. yeah, for sure. There are definitely um, aspirations. They like to play certain certain festivals and yeah. I think I don't know. Write the golden machine. I'm not sure what that means, but yeah, I'm sure we'll <laughs> figure it out. Happens. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, guys, thanks for the chat. No, thank, thank you. you. Cheers.